Caitlin and welcome to my brain tumor story. For me, I was definitely very familiar to be around a lot of doctors um, since the day I was born because I was born at 23 weeks premature. Fast forward to when we found out that I have a rare brain tumor was four years ago. Um, I was a junior in college and I was studying art and design in uh, Dubuque, Iowa, three hours away from my hometown in Chicago. So on my birthday, I got up, felt quite good, um, got ready for the day, ate my breakfast, and then all of a sudden, headache. Extremely, extremely bad headache. I honestly have never felt this type of headache before. So with that and vomiting and not even able to keep down water, I called my mom. Her first response was, are you stressed? I'm like, I don't know. Let, I don't know. <laughs> so we did some stress exercises over the phone. Um, of course, that did not work. I <coughs> ended up having to cancel my birthday dinner. Alright, I'm back. <laughs> I ended up having to cancel my birthday dinner, call into work and school sick. Um, but then later that day, I went to go get checked out at the health center on campus just to get checked out um because there was a part of me thinking maybe it was a really bad flu or some type of cold I'm a type of person that hardly 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 ever gets sick um or even miss school so of course that did not really help getting checked out so I just rested that day and then it wasn't until about the next week on um, Wednesday, I thought I had a migraine because um, I had like sort of like the sinus pressure on the forehead and then like the nasal cavity area. And then on Thursday, um, same type of symptoms came back. So I, of course, me being the, this type of student. I only had one class that day that was my graphic um, <clears throat> that was my graphic design class so I went even though I knew it would probably be uh, in the bathroom maybe maybe not um, ended up staying in the bathroom the entire class <laughs> um, of course vomiting so I got on the phone with my mom and the primary care doctor to be like what should I do what like go get go to the ER get checked out just get some rest I, I don't know so at this time I had work right after class so I walked to work informed them what was going on and that I had to go to the ER so I went to the ER, thank goodness a friend of mine was actually heading out that afternoon. So she dropped me off at the nearest ER, really about five blocks away from my dorm. So wa walking back would be definitely, definitely doable. Well, that of course did not happen. Um, I ended up telling the ER doctor everything what was going on, explaining to him that my pain was sort of like a roller coaster, would get really, 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 really bad, and then I would take um, aspirin, and then the pain would go away. And then once the aspirin wore off, the pain would go back, and it just like kept on going up and down like a roller coaster. So he at first was like, well let's give you a shot and then send you on on your way so I was like all right um 
since I don't know what the hell is going on, I don't know if it's the Curie malformation I have, or honestly, I, 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 it was a total question mark for me. Um, and quite scary being 21 years old and all alone. <laughs> so I, um, thought I was just gonna get a shot. But at the very last minute, he goes, let's do a CAT scan. So I was like, all right. And he goes, just to see if there is anything. Thank goodness he did do that CAT scan because to sum it all up, that's what saved my life and discovered that I had a brain tumor. So he goes, comes in with the results and says, you have a mass on your brain. Those words forever changed my life. So that, I would say, started my trip to the hospital my junior year and having quite an adventure. Um, I ended up being transferred to the University of Iowa after my mom and him talked on the phone because uh, that was only about an hour or so away from Dubuque and then four hours away from Chicago so um, my mom drove four hours not knowing anything not knowing any answers to a hospital that was new to both of us and a town that we have both have never even been to either. Um, I just love her for doing that. Um, So we got to the University of Iowa and after pushing and pushing and pushing for answers um, because the res residents, I think they were, yeah, the residents that come in like early, early in the morning and talk, 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 talk and then literally run out and they kept on calling it a mass. That was literally it. They just called it a mass. They weren't giving us like um, any clinical, like any diagnosis whatsoever. So my mom and I are definitely not that type of patients. We we want to know. So we complained to my um, the nurse that I had during that day. And so she was like, "Well, we honestly we never get patients like you guys." So she pushed and pushed and pushed for the chief of neurosurgery to talk to us. And he did. He talked for about a little over an hour or so. Showed us the recent MRI they did at that hospital. And said, we diagnosed your brain tumor as a rare genetic benign brain tumor known as Lumerte du Clos disease, or the long name of it, is a dysplastic ganglycytoma of the cerebellum. So it goes, the three years I have been at this hospital, you're the second person I've only seen with this tumor. And he also informed us that most neurosurgeons and neurologists in their of course, they're in the field of the brain, but they will probably have never seen this type of tumor in their time of working. Um, so that's how, <laughs> he was definitely indicating of that's how rare this brain tumor is. Um, I'm not quite sure if this is the right percentage, but this tumor makes up 1% of all the tu brain tumor, uh, cancerous and non-cancerous tumors that are out there, 
just wanted to say I'm not quite sure if that number is correct or not. Um, yeah. So, back to my story. So, the University of Iowa, uh, they did not want to remove the tumor. He only just wanted to help the hydrocephalus that I developed due to the tumor blocking my third ventricle. So my fluid wasn't leaving the brain. Or slowly, I, so the fluid wasn't properly leaving the brain. So I had a third a third ventricle optomy, I think that's what it's called, where they make a natural canal in the brain. This is sort of the second option of rather putting a shunt in. So we went with that. It worked. Um, so then I worked extremely hard and graduated on time on May of 2014 and then in December of 2015 I went to get my regular MRI checkup I had this feeling that the tumor grew um, but I wasn't quite sure but may or may not well it did it definitely did after Working very, very, very hard to not only find a team that knew my tumor in itself, but was more, um, what's the word, proactive and curious to want to know more about the tumor and about my condition, rather than just like brushing it off or telling me not to do anything because I also experienced that and that is definitely not an option. So we met with a great neurosurgeon at the University of Chicago and by the time we actually went to go see him, he knew my story, he knew my case, he saw the MRI and um, because we met with another doctor that presented my case to the neurology board. So that was great. That was a really great, great start to come to a new doctor and he knows you already. So he definitely did confirm that the tumor did grow, unfortunately. Um, here, this is actually the MRI that I had um, right before I had brain surgery. So this is the tumor this whole section here and and said I have good news and I have bad news good news is that you're primarily young and primarily healthy <laughs> bad news is that yes the tumor grew so if you don't do anything about this tumor it can it can kill you so there was no question whether or not if we were gonna have surgery we definitely knew that so we went home figured things out scheduled surgery for February 23rd of 2015 had surgery was in only the hospital about three days he got 90% of the tumor out um, the surgery took about three yeah, three hours um, for the surgery. So everything went great, surgery-wise. But I ended up having many, many complications from February to April. That indicated I had a bacterial infection, a PICLAN, put into my arm to give myself antibiotics. I ended up having a seizure, um, March around March, April, um, and then I had a CF leak uh, sometime in April um, that built up around here, um, 
and about the size of a large egg. So with this entire thing, my neurosurgeon comes in on his day off and goes, all right, your tumor is unusual. The way it grew is unusual. The texture of it was unusual. You having seizures is unusual. You having a CF leak this far away from the original surgery is unusual. So he's like, I have no clue what's going on. Why you ended up having a CF leak? Well, long story short, I ended up developing a hole in my dura layer right next to where they did surgery. A hole in my dura layer that surrounds the brain so therefore the fluid was getting into places where it should not be. So I asked him, I was like, can the antibiotics that they had me on do this? What the hell is going on? And he's like, what's well, good? He's like, I have no clue. Um, so yeah, that was uh, quite interesting. Um, yeah, so it's been a little over a year now since I had brain surgery. And it's definitely one of the best decisions and it's definitely something I needed to get done. But it's definitely been a very slow process and a learning for me to get used to of how my brain works now. I definitely am a lot slower not only in my processing of information but also talking sometimes is hard to get my words out or I have abnormal um, brain waves that aren't seizures but there are abnormalities in the brain waves so yeah things are good um, it's just a constant work I hope you guys enjoyed this video and please give me a thumbs up and subscribe as well because there will definitely be more videos to come. Thank you guys so much.